And close your eyes. Focus on your breath. Watch the breath as it's coming in. Watch it as it's going out. Try to be very clearly aware of what you're doing. So if the mind wants to wander off, you know right away the mind is about to wander off, so you can bring it right back. And then you stay with the breath coming in and going out. Let the breath be comfortable. Because when the breath is comfortable, the, the sense of ease and the, the well-being in the present moment. When you feel at ease in the present moment, then when you have to think about doing something or saying something or thinking something, you're coming from a sense of well-being. You're coming from a sense of brightness. This is the brightness in our life, is the brightness of awareness, the brightness of mindfulness, the brightness of wisdom that knows what's the right thing to do and what's not the right thing to do, and also has the way of getting you to do what you know is the right thing to do. Because sometimes we know what's right, but it's hard to do it. But if the mind's coming from a sense of well-being, it's a lot easier. We're about to enter the rains retreat here. Of course, here in California there's not much rain during the retreat, but we can have a retreat. And the retreat here doesn't mean that you just hide away. It means that you try to build something special for the next three months. So it's a good time to stop and think for the next three months. What would you like to do that's something special in your life that would give extra light to your life? Because the light doesn't come from electric bulbs. It comes from the clarity in your mind, the wisdom in your mind, that you realize what's the skillful thing to do and what's not the skillful thing to do, and you stick with it. Once you've made up your mind you want to do something good, then, then you really have to be truthful in sticking to it. And that requires wisdom as well, to figure out how can you stick to a determination when you're really hungry in the evening. Say you've made a vow that you're going to stick with the eight precepts at Serene's Retreat. All of a sudden it's 9 p.m. and you're famished, you're hungry. Okay, what can you do to deal with that? What can you do to get around that? Well, you realize that that hunger pang is going to come and then it's going to go. It's not going to stay there until tomorrow morning at 6. It's just a brief thing. Yet so often these brief little things that come to the mind, they take over. So you have to sit back and breathe comfortably. Remind yourself of all the good that comes from not loading up yourself up with food at night before you go to sleep. In other words, learn how to talk to yourself so that you can stick with your intention. So whatever the intention is, to observe the precepts more, or to meditate more, or to read more Dharma, or listen to more Dharma during the, the Rains Retreat. Or if you feel that you have a problem with anger, you say, okay, let's, let's work on anger this rains retreat. If you have a problem with fear, okay, let's work with fear. There's lots of things you can do. It's up to you to decide which part of your life needs some extra light, needs some extra clarity. So you can have something to show for your life as a human being. You can look back and even though your vow may last only three months, but still you've got this little bit of light in your life. The time when you took up a vow to do something specially good and you stuck with it for three whole months. So it's good to stop and reflect. What kind of area in your life do you have the most problem with? Is, is it with your thoughts? Is it your words, your deeds? Is it is issues of generosity? Is it issues of virtue, issues of meditation? Stop and take stock and decide for the next three months, this is an area I really want to focus on. I want to bring some extra light into my life here. Because that's the light that really shines, as the Buddha said, when someone has been careless and heedless, but then they decide to become heedful. It's like the moon at night, when the full moon, when it's been hidden by clouds, and all of a sudden the clouds go away. Everything lights up considerably. So you light up your own life, and you light up the life of people around you. They see a good example. That even though we may have some bad habits, we're not stuck in those bad habits. We can change them with a little extra determination, a little extra truthfulness, a little extra wisdom as we go through the day. So this is a good time to stop and think about what area of your life needs some extra light and sort of try to provide some extra light in there. Say for at least for three months, let's give it a try. And if for the three months you find that you can't handle it anymore, well then you can talk to yourself then. If you find though at the end of the three months that you're actually happier and better off from doing this, then you can just can keep on with it. So three months is a good length of time to try things out like this. So take some time and think that even though it, there's no rains in the rain retreat, you do want to bring some light into your life. In three months of acting good in a special way, that's, that's the, the best kind of light there is. The Buddha talks about people who are born in darkness and leave in darkness. In other words, people who are born poor with all sorts of disadvantages, and then they behave in, in unskillful ways. They come dark and they go dark. Some people come in darkness, but they go in light. In other words, they have lots of difficulties in the situation to which they're born, but they learn how to observe the precepts, they abstain from harmful activity, they do good things. 
That's being born and going light. As for people who are born into light, it's the same way. Some of them are born into light and they have all the, the pleasures and all the powers you might want as a human being. And yet they go in darkness. They abuse their powers. They abuse their wealth. And then those who are born into light and go in light. And as the Buddha said, it doesn't really matter how you come. What's important is how you go. So let's try to go in some light here. Bring light to our own lives and light to the lives of the people around us.